Hey, what up y'all? It's your girl P Hope and yes, I am looking rattered and tattered. Um, you know, it's 4th of July. I'm at home. I'm chilling. I'm happy to be off tomorrow. And you know, I figured <laughs> most of the cast of Love After Lockup looks rattered and tattered. So why do I have to make myself really look like something in order to do a Love at the Lockup review? Because you know what I'm saying? I know we all family and you're not here for me. You're here for this review. So you know what I'm saying? Just ignore, ignore all of this and let's get into the sh okay but i do want to say happy fourth to you all and i hope that you all are enjoying your day me personally i'm excited because i am off work tomorrow so i plan on doing some relaxing some cleaning up the house and i'll be getting ready for work on tuesday so i am thankful for a three-day weekend and um just shout out to everybody who is celebrating this independence day now that we got all that out the way let's get into this review so y'all this is one of them weeks where they didn't give us no whole bunch but you know they always gonna give us a little something to talk about so we just gonna kind of go in order as they showed up so let's start with rachel and doug's ass okay so it starts out with rachel packing up because doug is finally ready to bring his ass home okay so rachel has had to go drop little dougie off at her mama's house and she is going to head out to get him now i don't know how many hours away doug is but um she ended up having to get a hotel before she made it to him so um she's packing up her suv and she done packed up all of this shit and she is ready to go and as she's driving on the road she gets a call from doug and he's like hey baby how you doing and she said, I'm fine. He was like, well, what you up to? She was like, riding, you know, driving. And he said, oh, you know, okay, that's cool. And she said, yeah, so, you know, while I got you on the line, um, I did talk to your parole officer. And he let me know that, you know, you'll be able to be out and roam around between the hours of 8 a.m. and 5 p.m monday through friday and then on the weekends you have to be in the house like it's no it's no yeah no you're gonna have to be in the house and he was like so we're not gonna be able to go to the hotel and she was like yeah no that's that's not gonna happen so i don't know if he was talking about the hotel that she already had or did they plan on when the weekend came they was going to drop little Dougie off somewhere again and they was going to get them a nice little room and just, you know, chill out for the weekend. I don't know what happened, but when Doug heard that he was not going to be able to go to that room, he instantly got pissed. Because we all know that Doug, <laughs> Doug is definitely the height and the size of a grown man, but he has the brain of a kid. You know what I'm saying? I feel like little Dougie, I feel like Doug Jr. has more maturity than Big Doug. So when he heard that he wasn't going to be able to um, be out and about on the weekends, he was like, oh, oh, no, nah. oh, no, nah. see, this is what I'm talking about. They still trying to hold me down, and they not being fair, and I'm going to get me another parole. I'm going to switch my parole officer, and Rachel is doing her absolute best to calm his ass down. She's like, look, let's just think about this. Let's be rational. Like, you just need to understand that the rules are the rules right now. It's temporary. And he didn't want to hear none of that shit. Oh, I bet I get it changed. I bet, I bet, I bet. And I was like, okay, all right. He's throwing a, he's on his way out to the free world and he's still throwing tantrums. So at that point, Rachel was irritated and she was like, all right, dear. Well, you know, I got to get back on the road. If you want to go ahead and um, take your chances of switching up and getting an even bigger asshole of an officer, then you do that. Um, I love you. Got to go see you when I see you. OK, like Rachel was over it. And so she gets back on the road. And then she finally gets to his ass, right? Not long after she pulled up at the jail, um, they went ahead and released him. You know what I'm saying? Because she had already had all her ducks in a row. So she pretty much, all she had to do was pull up and get his ass. 
they let his ass out and you know at first he was trying to walk all cool like you know what i'm saying yeah that go my baby but then the excitement just came over him and he was like fuck it i'm finna run so you know when he started doing his little run she started doing her run she tipping in her heels because he done already requested for her to you know what i'm saying wear something conservative you know he want her to look kind of school teacherish and wear something you know what i'm saying real classy and preservative but the freaky side of it is i don't want you to wear no panties up under that skirt you know what i'm talking about so um yeah doug was trying to, to do his due deals right and so she put on exactly what he wanted her to put on and then they were so excited to see each other that he lifted her ass clean on up in the air and i said rachel i don't know if you saw that lift coming or not but girl, you are braver than I would ever be because I would have been about to beat his ass if he got my ass hanging out in public. Like, don't do all that. You gonna get to see this ass. I'm ready to give you this ass. But it's not for everybody to see. And um, so yeah, he lifts her up in the air and then at first he was just sitting there holding her and then next thing you know, she done cocked them legs eagle and uh, wrapped them around him and you know she just is all excited to see him and they just hugging and kissing and i'm like okay 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 maybe this thing might work out with rachel and doug for a little while okay because at first you know what i'm saying i thought that doug was gonna get out and be on some real asshole shit just like off the top but as for right now doug is pretty cool and he's just excited to be out okay um, so <laughs> then they get in the car. No, I'm sorry. They, before they got in the car, they went round to the trunk and she just the digging, trying to get something out. And I'm like, Rachel, what is you looking for, girl? Child, she pulled out that 15 pound log of raw bologna and, <laughs> and she was like, I got something for ya and he was so excited to see it he grabbed the hell out that baloney he bit it open with his teeth and then he took some kind of it looked like it could have been a business card or maybe some kind of key card that they have to use in there i don't know what the damn thing was but he used it as a knife and he took it out his back pocket and he cut him a thin slice of that baloney and he bit into it and he was like, yes, <laughs> this is it right here. And then after he took his bite, of course, you know what I'm saying? It will only be the gentleman thing to do is to let my lady get a bite. So then he shoved the rest of it in Rachel's mouth and she was forced to eat it as well. And I said, Rachel, bless your heart. Bless your heart. <sighs> after, you know what I'm saying? They done got a little hug and kiss and love and some bologna in now they are ready to pack up and leave okay so they both get in the car and they're riding off into the sunset and you can hear doug saying something about the fact that he was like i asked you not to put no panties on up under this damn skirt and she was like look you better play with this panty line till we get where we going because um you finna have to wait homeboy so <laughs> So, you know, Rachel is definitely ready to cock her legs up, but, you know, she wasn't about to do all that in them folks' car, because I don't know if that was a rental car or her car, but she wanted to do all that, okay? So, that was Rachel and Doug, okay? So, I'm sure by next week, they'll have, they'll be making a whole porn for us, and we'll just have to see how that goes. All right, Brittany and Ray. Y'all... I didn't realize that Ray was getting out so quickly and I don't I don't know why but I just didn't so um it's it's the day has come for Ray to come on home okay and so Brittany is up early I mean she is up at the crack of shit because it's still dark outside but she's up so early because she cannot go straight to the location where Ray is going to be getting picked up at. She has to actually go to Ray's parents' house first, okay? And I was like, oh, okay. And so as she's en route to the parents' house, she's letting us know like how nervous she is because Ray has already told her that, you know, he was raised a certain way. You know, he grew up in the projects. You know, it's not such a safe area and he's seen a lot and he's done a lot and he doesn't, 
he pretty much tried to paint the picture that, you know, just letting her know, look, I don't come from the same background that you come up from. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're a suburban kind of girl and I'm more of like the rough city boy. You know what I'm saying? I, I grew up in the slums was the paint picture that he tried to paint. So she's already nervous as hell about pulling up over there to the house. But once she gets to the residence, she's trying to figure out if the GPS done sent her the wrong way because she done pulled up at this brick, big, pristine ass clean house. Nice yard, quiet neighborhood. So she's trying to figure out what the fuck. And she's like, okay, well, you know, it says this is the address. So I'm going to go on in. She walks up to the door. She knocked on the door. I'm like, okay, that big ass house ain't got no doorbell, but whatever. I understand this is, is, is film. It's film, so I get it. She knocked on the door, and this beautiful woman comes to the door, welcomes her in, and it's nothing like the picture that Ray tried to paint for her. She said that when she got in there, the house was huge. It was beautiful. And it is you. And, I mean, and it put her in the field of her own family. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, like bottom line is you pulled up and Ray ass is sitting here living better than you. And so that's what that was. And so, you know, she's still slightly confused, but nevertheless, I think the um I think the caption said that that was Ray's stepmom, not his actual real mom. So it was his stepmom, Ray's dad, and Ray's grandma. And I know um Brittany also said something about she had made shirts for some kids. But I didn't catch what kids that she was talking about. So I don't know if Ray has younger siblings or if he's actually a dad. I, I don't know. I didn't catch that. But um, yeah. So she's got all these damn shirts made. These are um some welcome home Ray shirts. So she wants everybody to put their shirt on. And so that um when he arrives at his drop off spot, they can be standing out there with all their shirts on repping for Ray. Okay. Now, like I said, the stepmama welcomed her with open arms and then grandma came around the corner and it was very awkward when grandma came around the corner because they didn't know if they were supposed to shake hands, hug each other, kiss each other, or, you know what I'm saying, or just break out in a fight. They didn't really, under, you know, they was, they was tangling for just a second. But, you know, grandma went ahead and took the reins on that situation and she just kind of grabbed Brittany by both of her arms and was like it was air kisses and a you know and, and a welcoming greeting oh sorry <clears throat> and a welcoming greeting like you know grandma was like okay you know it's nice to finally meet you we've heard a little bit about you da 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 Okay, so now we are all ready to load up. Brittany let them know that, you know, she got a rental car. So um, everything is souped up and ready to go. And so then I think it was the stepmama was like, okay, well, you know, Ray's dad is going to drive because he doesn't let anybody drive him. <laughs> now, first of all, I don't know any of y'all from a can of paint and I realize that y'all don't know me from a can of paint. But if you knew that you wanted to drive and you knew that this was the arrangement that was going on, why wouldn't you at least get with me so that I could put your name on the rental car information? Because at any point in time, if anything goes wrong with this rental car, if you smack it, flip it, or rub it down, that shit is gonna be on me. But anyway, that ain't even the highlight of the situation. So they all get in the car, daddy's driving like the fuck he said he was going to. And you know, they're riding, everything is going fine. And along the ride, grandma is just making small talk because the stepmama was making small talk too, you know what I'm saying? And then grandma chimed in and she was like, so, um, how long have you all known each other? And she was like, um, well, it's been around nine months. You know, we're, we're working up to, um, to something pretty serious. And grandma was like, nine months. And she said, yes, ma'am. Yeah. And she was like, okay, 
you know, y'all known each other a pretty good little time or whatever. Nine months. Uh-huh. You know, when grandma hit with that uh-huh, I said, okay, grandma already know the tea. Grandma know the tea. As soon as grandma did her confessional, she was like, um, well, she said that they have known each other for nine months. But if you so this and that and everything that they say that you are, why do you have to date somebody behind bars? Like, why have you been single? What What is it about you that makes you have to date a, a, a inmate? Now, grandma wasn't throwing no shade on her grandson because Ray had already let it be known that him and his grandma are very, very close. So, it, you know, that wasn't the tea. The tea was... Why the hell is Brittany, you know what I'm saying? If you if you so-called got all your I's dotted and all your T's crossed, why is this the type of man that you end up with? So, <laughs> Grandma was definitely on to Brittany's T, but you know what I'm saying? That was just a little elderly shade, you know what I'm saying? It was something she said in confessional, but she didn't dare say that to Brittany, you know what I'm saying? She still made Brittany feel warmed and welcomed, okay? And she would just kick in with us in the confessional. So they pull up to the location where Ray is supposed to be, you know, getting dropped off at. So then the van pulls up in the um, gas station across the street from where Brittany and them is parked at. And they're like, oh my God, it's him, it's him. So Brittany is getting all excited. Like, oh my God, like I cannot believe it. And she had already said that she feel like when Ray get out of that van, if she is not the first person that he hugs, she's gonna feel some type of way. Now, I felt like that was some very selfish stuff to say because, I mean, you got his whole family in the car with you. Like, you got the man that created him, his wife, and then his grandmama who he done already told you that he's mad close with. So, for you to feel like you're the got to be the first person to get some attention, like, it just sounded really selfish. Like, I get it because you feel like you have been the one that been accepting all his emails. You probably been sending him bukus of money that you just haven't told us about. And, you know, you just been the ride or die for the last nine months. So, I get it. But at the same time, it's like these people been with him since he was in diapers. So whichever one of y'all out of the four who he choose to hug first, you just need to be okay with that. And you'll just be lucky if it ends up being you. But we don't even get that far because Ray gets out and she's like, oh my God, yes, Ray, Ray. And then he, I, it looks like he probably went inside of the gas station and then three minutes later when he comes out it didn't show if he got in the van or whatever but i'm pretty sure that that's what happened because the van pulled off and went on in another direction so i'm like well damn right did you go in the store and steal something did you steal a pack of condoms or you know what happened why are you going back and so that was the cliffhanger that they left us with is ray got out and Ray went the fuck back in. So we don't know what the hell is going on with Ray right about now. But we'll find out next week. Okay. <sighs> My favorite couple so far. Y'all already know who I'm about to say. Deontay and Nicole. <laughs> Alright. Um, Deontay and Nicole scheming ass are finally about to pull off from across the prison you know what i'm saying nicole is still extremely happy that she is a free woman she's walking around well riding around with a thousand dollars in her bra and she is just feeling like she is on top of the world so you know and we already know deontay is in that driver's seat just cheesing from ear to ear he's trying not to let his little uh his little deontay jr down in between his legs shoot up like a fucking rocket you know what i'm saying he's trying to keep his composure as much as possible so all he can do is just kind of smile it off and keep driving and so while they're riding um he's like so baby you know what i'm saying go ahead and reach on in the back seat and see what else i got for you so she reached back there and she get that little i think it was a victoria's secret bag 
and she pulls out the bag and she opens this watch and she was like dang you know what i'm saying you got me these watches i know this cost some money and the first thing he gonna say is money ain't no object when it comes to you baby you know what i'm saying whatever whatever you want you got it and i'm like first of all deontay even if that's how you feel about a woman don't ever tell a woman that shit because if she even has one percent of gold digger in her she's gonna take those words and absolutely use them to her advantage so you know this is just word to the wise don't ever say that shit to another woman again in your life okay all right so anyway then she starts pulling out all of this lingerie chat so she starts pulling out all this victoria's secret lingerie and the first piece that she pulled out was this kind of you know see-through sheer looking black thong and she was looking at it real crazy like what you want me to do with this and he was like what you mean what i want you to do with that i want you to put it on so i can take it off fuck you time back and nicole was like <laughs> nicole was like look i'll put it on for you but i already told you way back in the gap that i don't feel comfortable having sex right now I've been incarcerated for the last four years. I have PTSD about being touched. I have not been touched in a long, long time. And, you know, he was like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You did say that. So she was like, you know, I don't mind, you know, putting this stuff on for you and I'll model it for you. You can look, but you can't touch. And she was like, and I'll even send you some real sexy selfies if you want me to. And he was just like, <laughs> you know, yeah, baby, you know, you you can do that. But you could just see the look of disappointment on Deontay's face. He was like, oh, my God, like I've been holding out for a year and a half for this girl. Like, I, you know, at this point, he probably had already set Nicole Jr. on fire just thinking that okay the real thing is out now so bitch i don't need you no more but it looks like you're gonna have to um go raise your torso toy up from the dead deontay because you're gonna have to use that guy a little bit longer you're gonna have to use nicole jr just a little while longer because nicole is not having it don't touch her just don't touch her so let's continue to add insult to injury so he's already found out that he's not getting no type of ass tonight and he's already you know he's already jumped that hurdle and he's okay with that so then she said <laughs> then she looks over at him and says um you know i think i'm just gonna stay at my mom's house tonight and he was like huh and she was like, yeah, I, you know, I think I'll just be a little more comfortable at my mom's house tonight. But I promise you, I'm going to see you tomorrow. And he was just shaking his head. He was like, all right, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's strike two. Like, I, I just really feel like you playing with me. And she was like, oh, you know, no. Like, I'm going to see you tomorrow. I just, you know, it's my first day out. And I haven't seen my mom in forever. And she's just done so much for me. And Nicole said that, you know, when she was younger and she was just out and on them pills and running wild, her and her mom were not close. But while she was locked up, you know, um, they moved from, I forgot where they came from to I think they're in Virginia right now. And um, her mom did that for, for her because that's where she was locked up at. So once her mom made that move and she saw how much that her mom really does love and care for her, you know, she made an effort to say, you know what I'm saying? Let me be there for the people that are there for me. And um, she said her and her mom got really, really close. Okay. So uh, she just wants to spend some time with her mama. So she said. Now, that was number two. So then they pull up to the house. And she was like, yes, oh my God, this is my mom's house. And he's like, oh, okay. He grabbing on the driver's side door because he ready to get out and go meet his mother-in-law to be. And she said, skirt. Like, 
where you think you're going good sir and he was like oh i'm about to i'm about to go meet mom dudes and she was like oh no like no you're not about to meet my mama i mean not that's not what i'm saying i'm not saying you can't meet my mama what i'm saying is i want the time to be special and i just don't feel like right now is the time you know what i'm saying just let me and my mama have this little moment and when the time is right i'm definitely going to introduce you to my mama and he was like <laughs> look okay man like at this point it's whatever you say it's whatever you say and so he does eventually end up getting out the car he gives her a little hug gives her a kiss and nicole goes on about her merry damn way so then she gets in um she gets on the porch with her mama her mama is just breaking out into tears happy to see her child and that was a cute little moment but then Nicole quickly goes ahead and takes her shower, puts on a robe, jumps on the phone, and starts texting another man. Uh, the text said something about, um, hey baby, I'm home, I'm out, I'm ready to see you, I miss you. And then the, the person on the other end was like, are you serious? Are you out? Like, I want to hang out with you. And she's like... Well, we can hang out this weekend. Are you going to come get me? So, whoever this is, they're definitely going to come get her this weekend. And um, then she goes on her confessional and she's like, look, I love Deontay. I really do. But, you know, me and Deontay are not married. So, um, you know, it's we're not obligated like that. And I'm young and I'm still just trying to have fun. So, of course, she didn't go into detail about none of that. But what we know is she's fucking with somebody else. So, at some point, we'll see who this other man, woman, whoever it is that Nicole is messing with. But I bet you they black. I bet you they black. Anyway, y'all, Courtney and Josh. Courtney and Josh asked. <laughs> y'all know they had a wild, filthy, dog-haired kind of sexual night okay y'all already know it was dog hairs flying everywhere it was fan dust flying everywhere it was motherfucking paint chippings all over everything and they had a good ass time they had a yabba dabba do good time okay because she woke up the next morning and she's like you know good morning babe um is my hair looking crazy and he was like no nah, baby you know what i'm saying you look absolutely beautiful i'm sure both of their breath smelled like what the fuck but they didn't care because they was just drunk in love they were still drunk in love and, and that's okay it's okay and um so he was like you know i think that we should cook dinner together tonight would you like that and she was like yeah he was like okay cool because i think that'll be fun child two seconds later it showed courtney josh and all the damn dogs in the kitchen cooking steak and i said go tell them dogs to sit down with all that shit flying everywhere i'm pretty sure that nicole i mean i said nicole i'm pretty sure that courtney can pull a whole goddamn fur ball out of her system with all the hell that's probably flying around that house i know it i just know it but um on the serious side courtney and josh are having a conversation about him really just for real being out and being free and ready to finally start their life and um so they're sitting down over dinner and nicole starts crying because you know, Josh has really expressed to her how appreciative he is for her to actually trust him the way that she has. You know what I'm saying? He's like, you know, you gave up your whole job for me. And uh, Courtney says for her, like, uh, yes, she loved her job and she loved her career. But for her, love trumps the career. And it was just something about the way that Nicole was speaking in her confessional. I had already started looking at her saying like, something has happened to Courtney along the way. And I don't know what it is. And I swear to God, two seconds later, that's when she went in her confessional and she said that starting at the age of five years old, 
um, somebody in her family was taking advantage of her. And I said, that's what it is. Because you could tell by the way she was talking like that Courtney has been traumatized at some point in her life. And not only has she been traumatized and something happened to her, after that something happened to her, she felt lonely. She felt abandoned. She felt like nobody has been there for her. And so that's why she clings on to things the way that she does. And it also makes sense that that's why she's 30 years old and this is her third marriage. Because once she gets something, she wants to hold on to that something. Because she's been messed up from a child. So I understand that. I understand that. And I hope that, um, you know, Courtney can find somebody to eventually talk to about her um, childhood issues. And it's kind of... That's kind of funny that she can um, have that type of trauma, but she was um, in that position that she was in. But again, that just goes to show you that you don't have to do a whole lot of mental testing to get these kind of positions. So while we wondering why a lot of these officers and these people in these high positions in places like courthouses, jails, hell and wherever else you wonder how you get a crooked cop you wonder how you get um a fucked up judge or you know lawyer this is how because the requirements the mental requirements are probably little to none little to none so um it makes a lot of sense everything just kind of came around full circle when um courtney did her confessional so yeah so at this point, she's sitting there boohooing, crying at the dinner table. She can't even eat her dinner for just being um, so overwhelmed and emotional about the whole situation of how, yes, she did lose her career, but she gained love. So, you know, she don't feel no type of way about it. She feels like she won. Um, so yeah, that's just where they're at. Josh said that he is ready to step up be a man do what he needs to do in this relationship and so we'll just have to see how it works out between courtney and josh because it seems like they both really want to put um a real foot forward into just turning this into a successful relationship last but not least <laughs> stan and lisa child stan and lisa didn't have very much going on this week um, they had one point where Stan was at the house and Dash ass done came over right quick. Dash just came over to check on his homeboy and he was greeted at the door with them $1,300 worth of wigs that Stan done bought for Lisa. So Dash was looking like, um, bruh, what you doing with all this hair? Like you about to switch up your hair or what? And Stan was like, no, nah, I might need him at some point, but I'm good right now. And I said, Stan, who you lying to? We know that that motherfucking black ass rabbit sitting up on top of your head. God, you ain't grow that out your head. God ain't get that to you. Like, we know that, Stan, but we're going to let you live. We're we going to let you live. If you say that's your hair up there, then baby, that's your hair. So... Anyway, um, Dash comes in and sits down and he's just checking on him. You know, like, hey, you know how you been doing, buddy? I'm just coming over to check on you. And in the midst of him doing the checkup, Stan gets a phone call. And it's no other than Lisa. Okay, so Lisa calls and Lisa like, you know, hey, baby, how you doing? And he's like, you know, I'm good. And so she's like, yeah, I'm really ready to come home. She was like, but you know, um... I'm just wondering what last name do you think that I should use because you know I'm still married to two people. And Dash looked over at Stan ass like is she is she serious? Like that's how Dash was looking like is this bitch for real? And he was like, "Well, you know, babe, I don't really know which way you should go with that, but I do know that we got to go ahead and get you back to your maiden name. That's what we got to do. And she was like, yeah, um, yeah, we need, we need to get to working on that. And then she went into some other shit. But listen, by the time she hung up, Dash was like, 
Are you sure you're not being scammed? Let me tell you something. Dash wasn't going for none of that shit. Dash said, did she say she's married to two people? And he was like, yeah, you know, it's a long story. It's a long story because she actually does think that she got a divorce from one of the men. But she's not for sure, for sure, if the divorce is finalized. And he was like, okay, so tell me this. What if she's still dealing with one of these so-called husbands and she's got their last name. And then she's telling them about this friend that she has with a nice little chunk of change and her and him end up taking you for everything that you got and <laughs> and Stan was like what like you're talking crazy like nah none of that is gonna happen uh, because you know if she was gonna scam she would have scammed me a long time ago and anyways how can she scam me when she's in jail I, there's no scamming going on she's in jail and i said boy if stupidity was a meme let me tell you something stan and his toupee would be up there on that motherfucking meme so anyway after dash got done being absolutely flabbergasted by the fact that uh his old ass friend doesn't realize that he could really be getting taken advantage of um stan didn't give a fuck stan packed up his mustang with um him he probably had a little bag but he definitely had two of the mannequin heads with the wigs strapped in the seat belt in the back seat you know what i'm saying so him and the gals was ready to ride and they're on their way to pick up lisa they get to the spot and he said that it was absolutely freezing outside and he had been standing outside for about five or ten minutes and he said that he had to keep moving because if he don't keep moving, he's just going to freeze to death. And it ain't going to be nothing for Lisa to get because, you know, he's just going to be a frozen mess. And so everybody that's coming out the door, he's like, you know, Lisa, is that you? Is that you? Like, he's really trying to figure it out. And Lisa is nowhere to be damn found. So by the time fifth, the 15-minute mark came around, oh, he was pissed by then. He said, I've been out here 15 minutes, and I haven't seen a sign of Lisa. So at this point, y'all playing on my time. Like, I said, stand. <laughs> Nah, baby, what you fail to realize is you been playing on that time. You been playing on Lisa time. So I don't know what the hell you getting mad about because the prison system not finna move just because your name Stan and you got a couple meal. Like, they don't care nothing about that. You set, you standing out here at 8 o'clock in the morning, Lisa ass might not get out till 1 or 2 o'clock. So you might as well go sit your little frail ass back in that Mustang and cut the heat on. <laughs> Make yourself comfortable. So that was the cliffhanger for next week because Stan is cold, Stan is upset, and Stan really don't know what to look for because Lisa and I already said she looked like a goddamn man. So, you know, she is just a ray right now. And we will figure out what the hell is going on with these folks next week. So that was a quick little recap of this week's episode of Love at the Lockup. I hope you enjoyed it because I certainly enjoy giving it to you guys. So with that being said, y'all finish our 4th of July weekend and you already know I want you to be happy, be healthy, be safe. This is your girl P-Hope. Don't pop too many firecrackers and I'll catch you in the next video.